I am so glad you're here because today we're diving into the fascinating world of alpha carbon chemistry, specifically looking at enols and enolates. We're going to explore what they are, how they form, and their synthetic transformations like aldol reactions. And make sure you stick around to the end because I have some practice problems that should help for your next exam. First, let's learn what an alpha carbon is. When you have a carbonyl functional group in any molecule, the directly adjacent carbon on either side of that carbonyl group is going to be what's called the alpha carbon. We use the Greek alphabet to label how many carbons away from that carbonyl group you are. So the alpha carbon is the first carbon adjacent to the carbonyl group. The beta carbon is the second carbon atom. And the gamma carbon is the third carbon away from the carbonyl group. This position, the alpha carbon, is crucial due to the electron withdrawing nature of a carbonyl group. This makes the hydrogen atoms attached to the alpha carbon carbon incredibly acidic. And since they're acidic, this makes them highly reactive. When a proton is removed from an alpha carbon, this generates enols and enolates. But what exactly are those? By adding a carboxylic acid or base, we can form what are called enols. So enols, as the name suggests, contain both an alcohol and an alkene attached to the same carbon. If a strong base is used, this is going to abstract a proton from the alpha carbon position to create what are called enolates. Now, the enolate is formed because a strong base does not allow that enolate species to ever be protonated. From here, importantly, both enolates and enols can undergo transformations, which we're going to learn about in this video, to attach different substituents to that alpha carbon position, allowing us to create new bonds. Intriguingly, a ketone and an enol are tautomers of one another. A tautomer is a rapidly converting species that can convert between a ketone and an enol by changing the placement of the hydrogen atom and the double bond. Depending on the stability of either species, one is likely to dominate. So for example, in this case of the cyclohexanone, the enol species is only present in very negligible amounts around 0.1%, whereas the cyclohexanone is going to dominate at equilibrium at about 99%. However, if you consider a diketone, which can stabilize the hydrogen atom between both oxygen species, the enol tautomer is going to be the one largely found at equilibrium. Similarly, if we are to consider a species that contains a diene as well as a ketone, then we might expect that an enol would allow for the formation of a more aromatic ring. And in fact, that tends to be true, so therefore we would expect that the enol form would dominate at equilibrium because you're forming a stable aromatic ring in the process of forming this tautomer. Let's take a look at that tautomerization process, which occurs under acidic and basic conditions. Drawn on the screen is the acidic version, where the proton from an acid is deprotonated from the oxygen on the ketone in order to generate a protonated oxygen species, which is now going to be positively charged. And remember, this also leaves behind a new water molecule which is generated from the original acid. Now from here, what can happen is the electrons from the pi system can move up to the oxygen, leaving behind a resonance structure which has a carbocation at the carbon position. And from here, this is going to make the alpha carbon hydrogens incredibly acidic. And since they're so acidic, this water molecule can come back and deprotonate one of those protons in order to generate are enol. So in this process, we would be generating an enol species. Similarly, we could generate an enol through the addition of a base. So like hydroxide, for example, which we know is negatively charged, could come in and deprotonate that alpha carbon hydrogen, which would move its electrons down, allowing us to generate a very similar intermediate species where now we have a negatively charged oxygen, so this is called an enolate. And from here, since we have generated water in this mechanism, the oxygen atom can come and regenerate our base and form the exact same enol species. Now importantly, when trying to create enolates, it's incredibly important to decide which base you're going to use. So imagine that you chose sodium hydroxide or even something like sodium ethoxide which are both great bases. However, consider the fact that the very first step is that deprotonation of the alpha carbon hydrogen, and this is going to create a brand new enolate species, which is going to now place a negative charge on the oxygen. However, the byproduct of deprotonating using one of these bases, in the case of NaOH, would be H2O. 
And importantly, this means that this hydrogen could be abstracted at two different positions. So one of those is that the pi electrons will come down and this pi bond will go and get this original hydrogen in order to reform our ketone. Additionally, what might happen instead is you form the enol product where the oxygen, since it's negatively charged and nucleophilic, could also be the thing that goes and gets that proton from water in order to generate the enol, which would be the more desired product. However, notice that you would end up with a mixture of products since both of these pathways are possible when choosing bases like sodium hydroxide or sodium ethoxide. However, instead, if you were to use a base like LDA, which stands for lithium diisopropylamine, so we have a diisopropylamine, and it is negatively charged, and the counter ion is lithium, so that's lithium diisopropyl amine, stands for LDA. This, because it's going to be so sterically bulky around the nitrogen atom, will not allow for this process to occur, and instead what will happen is you will fully form the enol species, which would be the more desired product exclusively, as opposed to a mixture of products when using the other types of bases. Now you may have just noticed the important part of forming enols and enolates and what that allows us to do. So for example, if we are to form an enol of a compound like this, for example, what can happen is you can add something like Br2 or bromine gas. The electrons from the oxygen can come down to reform that carbon-oxygen double bond. And what might happen is that in this Br2 molecule, the pi bond will now come and attack the electrophilic bromine allowing us to do alpha halogenation. So in this process, we would be forming a brand new carbon to bromine bond. And then subsequently, now that this oxygen is positively charged, that bromide ion that was kicked off could come and abstract the hydrogen, allow us to create a neutral species, which would be our desired product, where now we have generated this new carbon to bromine bond, and this is called alpha halogenation. Next, let's talk about aldol reactions, which are one of the most important reactions in all of organic chemistry. Let's walk through this mechanism of this overall transformation where we're creating a brand new carbon to carbon bond. Remember, the first step would be deprotonation of the alpha carbon hydrogen from one of the hydrogens on this alpha carbon using a base. This would move the electrons into creating a new carbon-carbon double bond and move up the pi electrons from carbon to oxygen, allowing us to create our enolate species, which now is gonna make the oxygen negatively charged. From here, another one of these exact same molecules is still present in our reaction system, where these electrons can come back down to reform our carbonyl carbon. In doing so, pushing these pi electrons from the carbon-carbon double bond to attack the electrophilic carbonyl position and also kicking up these electrons. And in doing so, this is going to generate a brand new intermediate where now we have formed a new carbon-carbon bond at the alpha carbon position, allowing us to subsequently protonate the negatively charged oxygen by using the H2O which was formed in the first step and regenerate our hydroxide base by abstracting one of those hydrogens, allowing us to create this product. And notice that the alpha carbon position has now formed a new carbon-carbon bond to a homocoupling of these acetaldehyde species. Now that you've learned about the formation of enols, enolates, and the reactions that they can do, like alpha halogenation and aldol reactions, let's try some practice problems. Pause the video, try these problems independently, then resume the video to check the answers. For this aldol reaction, we need to identify where the alpha carbon hydrogen atoms are, and they are the carbon adjacent to the carbonyl carbon. Sodium hydroxide acts as a base and will deprotonate one of those alpha carbon hydrogens, allowing us to generate an enolate species. So now that we have formed our carbon-carbon oxygen bond and our negatively charged oxygen, we are left with the species that can do a coupling with another one of these compounds. So what will happen is one of those compounds will come near, and this still has an electrophilic carbon at the carbonyl aldehyde position, and these pi electrons will come back down, and this carbon-carbon double bond will now attack that electrophilic carbon, allowing us to kick up the pi electrons to the oxygen and generate an intermediate 
which has now been formed between these two species. So we are left with, remember the attachment is at the alpha carbon, which is the carbon adjacent to the carbonyl carbon, and remember it is attaching here, so there's going to be an oxygen, and towards the other direction there's going to be our carbon followed by our isopropyl group, and this is going to be negatively charged at least until it interacts with the water which was generated after the deprotonation of that alpha carbon, which will allow us to generate a brand new alcohol. So our final product should look something like this. And remember, our new carbon-carbon bond is formed at the alpha carbon position. We are left with an alcohol as well as the rest of our compound. So this would be our final product of this aldol reaction. Now anytime we do a crossed aldohol reaction, which is a reaction between two different carbonyl compounds that are not a homocoupling, we need to begin by identifying the alpha and the beta positions. So the alpha carbon is going to be the one adjacent to our carbonyl carbon, and therefore our beta carbon, which is the one that it reacted with, is going to be at the carbon attached to the alcohol. From here, we can identify where the new bond has been formed through the process of the aldol reaction. And from here we can see that if we were to take the left hand side of this molecule, then the species that did this interaction is this ketone. Notice that it looks identical on the left hand side of the carbonyl, and on the right hand side we are left with two carbons. So it, the molecule looks like this. Now the part that came from the beta side is going to have an attachment, a carbonyl carbon, at that position, and then we are left with one, two, three carbons, one, two, three. So these are the reactants that must have reacted. Now importantly, when doing crossed aldohol reactions, if you don't want to get homocoupling of just a single type of molecule, then you need to use that very specific base that we learned about in this video called lithium lithium diisopropylamine, or LDA for short. Remember that when just trying to form an enolate, we need to use a very specific base, otherwise the enolate species would attack an electrophile at the oxygen position, forming an enol, or a mixture of products where you regenerate the carbonyl compound. However, when you use LDA, because it's so bulky around that nucleophilic nitrogen position, that allows us to stop at the enolate position, allowing us to generate what we're actually in search of, which is a negatively charged oxygen oxygen with a double bond to the carbon and the alpha carbon. So if you have any questions about today's video, drop it as a comment down below and I'd be happy to help you out. Subscribe to my channel for more chemistry content and I'll see you in the next video.